Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be discussing DNA mutations. This is part two of a two-part lecture series on DNA mutations. The concepts in these lectures are going to be very important because you need to have a good understanding of DNA mutations, especially in the nitty-gritty details because the devil lies in the details. And in terms of your exams, you will be tested on the details. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. It allows us to keep these lectures completely free for your medical educational medical education purposes as well as uh, it essentially lets us keep it free for everyone. So with that being said, let's dive right in by reviewing uh, DNA mutations. DNA mutations are very important. They can occur in a lot of times, and oftentimes DNA mutations occur due to errors in replication. When you have replication errors, you can lead to DNA mutations. You can also get DNA mutations due to radiation, such as UV radiation, you can also get it due to infections, can lead to mutations, etc, etc. For example, think about the Epstein-Barr virus, think about, um, think about uh, Kaposi's sarcoma that can be caused due to HIV, etc, etc. So, DNA mutations can be caused by a majority, uh, by a numerous amount of things. Now, when it comes to DNA mutations, there are five main classifications you need to understand. The first one is point mutations, second one, frame shift mutations, and these two have already been discussed in part one of our DNA mutation lecture series, so I highly recommend you check it out. The rest of the five, the rest of the, the, the remainder of them, the three that we're gonna discuss in this lecture are also very important and they're high yield and you need to know them. Those are the large segment deletions, the triplet expansion deletions, and the, oh sorry, the triplet expansion mutations, and then the splice site mutation. These are going to be discussed in this lecture in part two. Keep in mind that certain diseases are dependent on a certain type of mutation. So a specific mutation will lead to a certain type of disease. We're gonna be discussing all the diseases that are associated with certain types of mutations as this lecture goes on. We also did that in the previous lecture where we discussed point and frame shift mutations. So again, highly, highly recommend you watch that video and make sure you know under everything in that video very well. So let's just dive right in. Let's talk about the first of the three that we're gonna to discuss today. And those are the large segment deletions. Large segment deletions are very self-explanatory. As the name implies, it is a large segment of DNA that gets deleted. How does this happen? Oftentimes, this is a type of mutation that occurs due to unequal crossover of genetic material during meiosis. High yield in order for you to understand how a large segment of your DNA is getting deleted. It's occurring during meiosis when you have the crossover pathway of the genetic material. If that genetic material being crossed over does not cross over in a balanced fashion, you will have one cell that has more genetic material than the other cell, and that will lead to the other cell having a large segment deletion. If that other cell becomes the one that takes part in the process of becoming a zygote, then you will have a zygote with a large segment deletion. Depending on where the deletion is, it will it will you know essentially determine what type of disease it will be. But it is caused because a large segment of DNA is deleted. During this process, you will lose you will lose that humongous part of DNA. Compared to other types of deletions, this is a very broad deletion. This is a very large type of issue that is occurring in the genome. Now, this is going to be a loss of function mutation. You will lose a segment of DNA, and because you're losing it, you're not gonna be able to form the proper proteins to do the proper mechanisms and to do the proper roles they need to do. As uh, proper uh, cellular processes will definitely be impaired and they will not be able to be carried out depending on how severe the deletion is and how large of a segment it is will also determine how severe the actual disease will be and how uh, impaired the cellular processes will be. An example of a large segment deletion is alpha thalassemia. In alpha thalassemia, you are deleting part of the alpha globin gene. When you delete part of the alpha globin gene, you will essentially lead down the pathway of developing alpha thalassemia. The more you delete, the worse the disease. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so the next type of mutation is the triple repeat expansion mutation. This is a very important thing to know because this is going to be something you will be tested. This is high yield AF. I'm gonna write it right now so it sticks in your mind and so you wake up and you pay attention because I, I understand how easy it is to uh, not pay attention. So. This is a type of mutation that occurs because of an expansion of a short nucleotide segment. Oftentimes, if not always, this is happening in a triplet format. If you remember, a codon is a uh, group of three nucleotides, okay? And in a triplet repeat expansion mutation, a codon or a group of three nucleotides will be repeated depending on a certain number of times, okay? 
Now, what will happen when this occurs is that you will essentially get a uh, polypeptide that is longer than normal because you have more uh, you have more codons, you have more essentially nitrogenous bases being added to the DNA, and this will lead to a longer peptide because the DNA is growing. Now, depending on where the repeat is, it can occur in both the coding or the non-coding regions of DNA. It is very variable, it is something we really cannot predict, and you just need to know it can really happen at any point in the DNA. Now, depending on how the amino acids are added, they may lead to, or depending on how the codon is affected, especially if it's in the coding or the non-coding region, you may have addition of amino acids that affect the protein structure, especially the folding. And when you affect the folding, you will also affect the function overall of that protein. Now, very high yield. The next few things I'm going to say about this topic or about this uh, concept is going to be extremely high yield and you need to pay attention. I also bolded it so you don't forget what you are looking for. But essentially, in this type of condition, what you are going to see are uh, uh, diseases that show a very specific feature, and that is called anticipation. Anticipation is a very high yield concept. The reason why it is high yield is because there are classic diseases that present with antici anticipation. Anticipation is a type of a pathway or a type of consequence of the triple repeat expansions that occurs because in these types of diseases, the triplet region will grow. It will repeat and grow larger with subsequent generations. As the progeny progresses, those progenies will have more and more regions that have uh, the triplets in them, okay, that have these repeats in them. Now, this will result, and this is the concept of anticipation you need to know. Anticipation in this condition, you will have onset of disease and uh, occurring way earlier. So as you go down the progeny, the disease will occur earlier and earlier with subsequent generations, and the prognosis for those generations will get worse and worse. Because as the repeat section grows, the process and the property of that protein will get more and more hindered, and that will cause the disease to present earlier and be more aggressive and be more detrimental to someone's health. Very high yield topic, very high yield concept, because you will get tested on this. An example of anticipation would be the classic, classic example is Huntington's disease. In Huntington's disease, you have repeats of the CAG uh, codon. This will repeat over and over again. And Huntington's is the classic condition that presents with anticipation. Okay, very classic condition, something you need to remember. You are going to see this on the exam, on the test banks, etc., etc. Okay, high yield very high yield. The other diseases that have triplet repeat expansions are myotonic dystrophy. In this condition, you will have repeats of CTG, fragile X syndrome with repeats of CGG, and Frederick ataxia, where you'll see repeats of GAA. Very high yield. There's really no way that I can tell you off the top of my mind that will help you remember these. So what I recommend is write it down, remember it, retain it, do this nonstop until you make sure you understand these four uh, diseases and the codons or the repeats that are associated very highly. It, it is very possible that during the exam you are just given the DNA segments and you have to be able to identify these repeats and then know that this is the condition that you are dealing with. Very, very high likelihood that that can happen. So now we've talked about large segment deletions, we've discussed uh, triple repeat expansion mutations. Let's move on to our final type of, uh, of uh, mutation, DNA mutation topic that you need to know, and that is the splice site mutations. Splice site mutations are types of mutations that occur uh, because uh, they are essentially mutations occurring at the splice site, okay? Uh, these are mutations occurring specifically in this region. And what will happen is that you may result in the retention of an intron in the mRNA, or you might excise an exon. And when, that, when you are messing up with the mRNA splicing and you're essentially messing that process up, the proton, excuse me, the protein will not form 
properly. So the protein may be altered and it may be impaired due to this. And this could be very variable. It just depends where the splicing is going wrong, where the mutation is happening. And essentially, you can see this in certain diseases. For example, beta thalassemia, in dementia, and even in epilepsy, you might be dealing with splice site mutations that are causing these conditions. Now, splice site mutations can also lead to rare causes of certain types of cancers, but for your understanding, understand that this is something that's happening at the splice site. You may have retention of an intron, or you may have excision of the exon itself. So with that being said, that pretty much covers majority of the information you need to know for DNA mutations, both part one, and now we've discussed part two as well. If this was helpful, don't forget to subscribe to our channel because your support means a lot to us. It allows us to keep these lectures completely free and completely attainable for everyone because we understand that you're going deep into debt. If you want to see more lectures like this completely free as well, go to our website, www.madmedicine.org, where you can find a bunch more educational content for your exam preparation needs.